Welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, for January 4th, 2022. Here, you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, with the goal of hearing half of the Bible by January 9th, 2022. We began this journey of listening to God's Word, the Bible, at the beginning of July 2021, and so we have continued. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. And the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6 reads, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. And the book of John, chapter 15, verse 26 reads, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. And chapter 16, verse 5, But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. If I depart, I will send him to you, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Verse 9. Of sin, because they do not believe in me. Verse 10. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more. And verse 11. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Amen. And we know that in the book of John, verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2, John chapter 1, verse 2, He was in the beginning with God. Amen. And 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 reads, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we having died to sins might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. And in the book of Luke chapter 11 verse 28, But he said more than that, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And those are the words of Jesus Christ. And Romans chapter 10 verse 17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And finally, John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Amen, amen, and amen. And now, today, January 4th, 2022, we shall hear Psalm 128 and Psalm 129. From the book of Proverbs, we shall hear Proverb 4, because it is the fourth day of the month, and there are 31 Proverbs, one for each day of the month. The Proverbs are God's wisdom. The Old Testament reading will be from the book of Zechariah, chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 3, verse 10, 
And the New Testament reading will be from the book of Revelations, chapter 18, verse 1 through 24. All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson, Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved. And now, Psalm 128, and it reads, Blessed is he who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house, your children like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. Verse 5, The Lord bless you out of Zion. And may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Verse 6 and last. You, yes, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Amen and amen. And now Psalm 129. And it reads, Many a time they have afflicted me from my youth. Let Israel now say, Many a time they have afflicted me from my youth. Yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed on my back. They made their furrows long. The Lord is righteous. He has cut in pieces the cords of the wicked. Let all those who hate Zion be put to shame and turned back. Let them be as the grass on the housetops, which withers before it grows up, with which the reaper does not fill his hand, nor he who binds sheaves his arms. Verse 8 and last. Neither let those who pass by them say, The blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. And the word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ is already blessed. And now proverb. Proverb 4. And it reads, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father. And give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Verse, verse 5. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all your un getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Verse 10. Hear, my son and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Verse 14. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it, turn away from it, and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they have done evil, and they, their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter into the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. Verse 20, my son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. 
Verse 27 and last. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Amen, amen, and amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As is, I pray, every hearer. And now, in Jesus' name, the book of Zechariah, the Old Testament reading for today. By way of introduction, for a dozen years or more, the task of rebuilding the temple has been half completed. Zechariah is commissioned by God to encourage the people in their unfinished responsibility. Rather than exhorting them to action with strong words of rebuke, Zechariah seeks to encourage them to action by reminding them of the future importance of the temple. The temple must be built, for one day the Messiah's glory will inhabit it. But future blessings is contingent upon present obedience. The people are not merely building a building, they are building the future. With that as their motivation, they can enter into the building project with wholehearted zeal for their Messiah is coming. Amen. And now the book of Zechariah chapter 1 verse 1 and it reads, In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, the prophet, saying, The Lord has been very angry with your fathers. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you says the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your fathers to whom the former prophets preached, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn now from your evil ways and your evil deeds. But they did not hear, nor heed me, says the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? Yet surely my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not overtake your fathers? So they returned and said, Just as the Lord of hosts determined to do to us, according to our ways and according to our deeds, so he has dealt with us. Verse 7. On the twenty-fourth day of the eleventh month, which is the month Shabbat, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, the prophet. I saw by night, and behold, a man riding on a red horse, and it stood among the myrtle trees. In the hollow, and behind him were horses, red, sorrel, and white. Then I said, My Lord, what are these? So the angel who talked with me said to me, I will show you what they are. And the man who stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are the ones whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro throughout the earth. So they answered the angel of the Lord who stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro throughout the earth, and behold, all the earth is resting quietly. Verse 12. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah, against which you have angry, have, were angry these seventy years? And the Lord answered the angel who talked to me with good and comforting words. So the angel who spoke with me said to me, Proclaim, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great zeal. I am exceedingly angry with the nations at ease, for I was a little angry, and they helped, but with evil intent. Verse 16, Therefore thus says the Lord, I am returning to Jerusalem with mercy. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts, and a surveyor's line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. Again proclaim, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, My city shall again spread out through prosperity. The Lord will again comfort Zion, and all again choose, and all will choose Jerusalem. Verse 18. Then I raised my eyes, and I looked, and there were four horns. And I said to the angel who talked with me, What are these? So he answered me, These are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen, and I said, What are these coming to do? 
So he said, These are the horns that scattered Judah, so that no one could lift up his head. But the craftsmen are coming to terrify them, to cast out the horns of the nations that lift up their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. Chapter 2 Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. So I said, Where are you going? And he said to me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what is its width and what is its length. And there was the angel who talked with me going out, and another angel was coming out to meet him, who said to him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be established as towns without walls, because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. Verse 5, For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her, and I will be the glory in her midst. Verse 6, Up, up, flee from the land of the north, says the Lord, for I have spread you abroad like the four winds of heaven, says the Lord. Up, Zion, escape you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you, for he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. Verse 9, For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Verse 10, Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I am coming, and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations will be joined to the Lord in that day, and they shall become my people, and I will dwell in your midst. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And the Lord will take possession of Judah as his inheritance in the Holy Land, and will again choose Jerusalem. Verse 13. Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. Amen. Chapter 3. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have rem- I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. Verse 5. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him, and the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my command, then you shall also judge my house and likewise have charge of my courts. I will give you places to walk among these who stand here. Verse 8, Hear, O Joshua the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon the stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the inequity of that land in one day. Verse 10 and last. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. Amen. Amen and amen. And this word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ is already blessed. And now the New Testament reading from the book of Revelations, beginning at chapter 18. And it reads, After these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated 
bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornications with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her inequities. Render to her just as she rendered to you, and repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. Verse 7. In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. Therefore her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord God who judges her. Verse nine, the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. Standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise their merchandise anymore. Verse 12, merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon and incense, fragrant oil and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies and souls of men. Verse 14. The fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you, and all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you, and you shall find them no more at all. The merchants of these things who became rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who travel by ship, sailors, and as many as trade on the seas, stood at a distance, and cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What is like this great city? They threw dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth. For in one hour she is made desolate. Verse 20. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Verse 21. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found any more. Verse 22, the sound of harpists, musicians, flautists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you any more. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you any more. And the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you any more. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you any more. And the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you any more. For your merchants were the great men of the earth. For by your sorcery, all the nations were deceived. Verse 24 and last. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and of all who were slain on the earth. Amen, amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. And as it is written, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed is he who reads, and those who hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. Amen. And so in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every hearer of this prophecy, this book, 
is already blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As you go forth, expect blessings because the word cannot lie. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, as it is written in Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Expect also that you have been healed. Believe it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Do not believe your eyes. Do not believe your body. Believe in the mighty name of Jesus Christ by faith that this word, who is God himself, as you have heard, you have been healed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name.